this can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Are these all your chairs? Yes, I've got a lot. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. You never told me it was this heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Ta-da! This poor thing, whatever we do, needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I just want to go to that. <laughs> ...valuable... I'm literally speechless. And hopefully saleable items. I had to put my glasses on, they're so bright. If Jackie is successful, then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £265. Oh, profit! <laughs> It's another busy day at the Altrincham Recycling Centre in Greater Manchester. With locals lining up to clear their clutter. But hoping to swoop in and save the best bits is upcycling expert Jackie Joseph. My step count is going to go through the roof today because I'll be pacing up and down this pavement looking for goodies. Nothing is going to pass me and get into those skips. Jackie's mission is to find three items that have the potential to be saved and hopefully sold on for cash. What are you throwing out today, then? She's been given special permission to sniff around in other people's boots, so don't try the same at your local recycling centre. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sue's arrived, but will Jackie like the look of what she's unloading? Oh, that looks very sporty. <laughs> well, it is, but we're a bit old for it now. <laughs> I'm Jackie. What's your name? Sue. Sue, lovely to meet you, Sue. Are all, all of these yours? Well, they're my husband's, my, my children's. They're like old. Wow. So how long have you had them for, then, Sue? Oh, probably since the 80s. So about four, yes. 40 years. Yes. Where would you go? Uh, well, France, mainly. Yes. France or Austria or Switzerland. Oh. They were good family holidays. Yeah. But, of course, we're too old now. And You're are... never too old, Sue. <laughs> They've been in the garage for a long time, and I can't wait to get rid of them. I cannot see them being crushed. Would you mind if I took them? OK. Yeah, is that OK? Yes, of course. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, you're amazing, Sue. Thank you. So Jackie's first find is four sets of retro skis. Any idea what she might do with them, Sue? Shelves or something like that? Or no idea. I'd be very interested to hear. OK, shelving sounds good. Jackie, what are your thoughts? I have never found anything like this at the recycling centre, to be honest with you. I've really got to think outside the box with this one. But whatever happens, it's certainly going to be different. Jackie feels as if there's potential to unlock with the skis, and she knows just the maker to help her see it. Bruce Forsyth, the American carpentry king who uses his stateside style to transform unwanted items into fantastic pieces of furniture. When I needed to get in the right headspace for designing, I kind of just shut myself off. So I locked the door, turn off my phone, you know, put some good music on or something, and then I can kind of like just focus in, you know, get inspired. Creatively speaking, I would think the best part about my job would be that I can take somebody's idea or a, a small sketch on a piece of paper and then make that re a reality. And it's that ability to do that is really what I find interesting. But will Bruce be able to create something amazing from four sets of old skis? Maybe shelving will be the answer. That's one item saved. It's always nice to have a little bit of a clear out every now and again. But Jackie still needs to tee up another two. This is just my cup of tea, putting around the recycling centre. 
and hoping for a hole in one. Four! Mike and Jake have arrived, but will Jackie think what they're chucking is worth saving? Oh, can I stop you in your tracks there, guys? Yeah. Hi there, I'm Jackie. What's your name? Mike. Mike, lovely. And what's your name? Uh, Jake. Jake, lovely to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you. I spotted this, what I think is a blanket box. It is a blanket box, uh, that's right. Who does right. it belong to? It belongs to me. Uh, it's been in my family for about 50 years. It used to belong to my mum and dad, and then we seemed to inherit it about 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, not really been used recently, so we thought we'd bring it down to the tip today. I really like it. <laughs> I really do. They used to use it, like you say, for sheets, blankets, storage. Then we inherited it when our children were uh, a little bit smaller, uh, but for the last few years, we've not had any use for it, really. It's wow. just been used just to store things on top of. You know what I love about it is I, I can see the original casters, which are always lovely to see, and it doesn't look like anything's been done to it. Do you say no, nothing has No, been nothing's done. Been, been done to it, no. Now, Mike and Jake, can I be as bold <laughs> as to ask, can I take it off your hands? You certainly can. That's very kind. And I will keep in touch. OK. And if I manage to breathe new life into it, I'll come back and show you what I've done. Is that all right? That's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. That's amazing. Would you mind pulling it out for me? That would be great. Jackie is delighted with the blanket box. Mike and Jake, are you pleased she's taken it off your hands? I'm quite happy. It's been in the family for 50 years. It seems a shame just for it to get crushed, basically. Hopefully someone can use it for another 50 years. OK, so it is a bit tired, but it's been well used and well loved, and it's been in Mike's family for decades. So what this needs is some creative thinking and a lot of TLC. So who does Jackie know that can use TLC to hopefully create some OMG? It's Chloe Kempster. Chloe is a passionate practitioner of paint. Her work proves that with some skillful restoration and creative colour choices, old forgotten furniture can have a bright future. My work often gets described as, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> or that's bright. You know, those are the common ones. If I wasn't a furniture artist, I think I would be doing some kind of art anyway. Um, I love painting, I love creating, I love interior design, all of that. But, um, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I wanted to make a nice cream van. <laughs> well, Chloe, let's see what you can whip up from this old thing. That's two items safely tucked away. What are you throwing away today, then? But Jackie can't call it a day yet. She still needs to take a shot on something she can work on herself. Thank you very much. Paul's arrived. Will the contents of his boot be the slam dunk Jackie's looking for? Oh, hello there. Oh, hello. Hello, I'm Jackie. What's your name? Paul. Lovely to meet you. I just saw this coming out of your boot. It looks rather nice. Is it yours? It's uh, from a wife's family. My wife's mother, Granny, as we called her. And from before, maybe. Granny used it as a side table, probably with a flower pot on it. It's about 80 years old. It's just uh, an occasional table that uh, we're now getting rid of. I, I really like it. It actually looks like English oak. And I still think pieces like this can be useful. Yes. Why are you getting rid of it now? We've got too many bits and pieces like this. Oh, have you? <laughs> too many of them. You know, I, I really like it. Um, can I keep this? You can. Can I take this away? You can. But if you can get some, you know, some use out of it, in yes. I'll keep in touch with you though, Paul. Lovely. And if you, if it's okay, I'll come back and show you. Yes, certainly. If I'm able to do anything with it. Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jackie's final find is an occasional table. Paul, any thoughts on what she might do with it? I think Jackie can uh, have it repaired. And um, perhaps have it painted, shabby chic, and uh, pass it on. Oh, shabby chic. Now you're talking. It's not bad, is it? It's quite quaint and quite sweet. Yeah, there's a little bit of damage at the base, but I'm not worried about that. It just needs a little bit of TLC, a lot of imagination, and some clever thinking. No shabby chic? Oh, come on, no-one shares my vision on this show. 
Bruce's challenge is to create something cool from the skis. Chloe will attempt to beautify the blanket box and Jackie will have a big job making the little table fit for any occasion. Well, I'm quietly confident that the things I've picked up today will be amazing once I've finished with them. It is going to take a lot of hard work, but you know me, I'm always up for the challenge. From the hustle and bustle of the recycling centre to Sisset in West Yorkshire. There's no snow forecast, so Bruce might be wondering why Jack is sent him this lot. What do you make of them, Bruce? I absolutely love them. I love the colour, I love the air they're from, that like retro kind of look. And um, I really want to kind of make them live on, but I don't want to detract from these are skis. And I have some ideas, but I'm curious to see what she has to say. So, you know, hopefully we're on the same page on this one. Hey, Jackie, how you doing? Hey, Bruce. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. So, have my fabulous skis arrived? Yes, they did. I like them. They're like very late 70s, early 80s, uh, these things. I love them. <laughs> Great. I think they are really cool. I was picturing them as a coat stand, but I wondered if you had any suggestions. So, I was thinking a set of outdoor benches. Because they're skis, they can go outside, they can live outside. Uh, and I think they'd fit in anywhere, really. I think they'd be kind of uh, fun. Playful. Oh wow, I love the idea of benches. And I think there's enough material there to make two. What about budget? Um, budget wise, I think 250 a bench, so 500 for the pair. Okay, 500 pounds for the pair. Cool. I'm happy with that. Okay, great. Okay, good luck. All right, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye bye. bye. Bruce. Jackie loved the idea. We both thought seating, we both thought something kind of playful with them. We both think outdoor. Yeah, you look at them, they are outdoors. And so why not put them back outside? And I really, really want to get into this project because this is really a fun one. Bruce and Jackie have agreed a budget of 500 pounds to create two benches. Bruce is excited to tackle this black run, but he's never worked with skis before. Hopefully he doesn't end up crossing his tips and taking a creative tumble. Leaving Bruce to slide into action, Jack is in Fletney to drop off the blanket box to Chloe. Excited to see what's coming your way? I'm looking forward to seeing what Jack has bought me today. Um, as long as it's not too nice, because obviously I want to put my own stamp on it. Fingers crossed it's had a bit of wear and tear and it's ready for some colour. Well, this old blanket box has been well used and well loved. I'm not sure what Chloe's going to think about it. And sometimes, the simplest items are the most difficult to transform. Hey, Chloe. Hi, how are you doing? Good. So what do you think? I like it. I actually really like a blanket box. I think they're so handy. I'm thinking, you know, to keep it as a blanket box, but just give it some oomph, give it something. Yeah. I don't think it would be enough to just paint it, you know, a colour. No, yeah. It needs to have a bit of a wow, but I've got a nice blank canvas on here to yeah. do it with. Um, so I do need to do something interesting because this is flat and this is flat and the, yeah. there's not that much going on. Are you going to keep that little motif thing on there or...? Yeah, it looks a little bit lost in the middle there, out on its own. Mm. Um, so I think probably I will remove it but I will actually take inspiration from it. So right. maybe I'll use this kind of wavy motif on the bottom and perhaps some of the florals. Mm. So that actually it, it's keeping the idea of it, but it should make sense a lot more because it'll be a pattern across the whole piece. So on the outside, we're talking florals, we're talking bold, which I absolutely love. Yeah. What are you going to do on the inside? What are you thinking? I think it would be nice to have a pop of colour as you open the lid. Yeah. Um, to be honest. But then I'm mindful of budget as well because obviously it might take me a while to do all the painting on here. Yeah. Um, so I may have to be a bit careful. If I can do something fun on the inside, I will. So what, what are we talking budget-wise? I'm going to quote 295, if that's OK. Yep, yeah, 295, that sounds amazing, cos I know, although it, it looks simple and it sounds yeah. simple, I know it's going to take a lot of work. Chloe, I shall leave you in peace, let you get on with it, and good luck. Oh, And I'll see you definitely. soon. Yeah, take see care. you soon. Bye. Bye. So the blanket box is going to be given a funky floral paint job. 
I think the challenge is doing the right thing to it because there's not a lot of other redeeming features. You know, at the end of the day, it is just a box. So I'm going to have to do something really special on the front to make it stand out. Chloe has a budget of £295. She has a bold plan to inject colour and pattern. But will that be enough to revitalise what is essentially a box on legs? With Bruce and Chloe all set with their items, in London, Jack is about to get to work on the occasional table. This octogenarian needs a bit of love. The table, that is, not me. What's the plan, Jackie? Well, I'm not going to smash it up. I think I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not sure what I'm thinking of, sort of, colour and design-wise. But, yeah, it's simple, but it's still useful. So the little table is going to remain as a little table. And Jackie's first job is to remove any surface dirt and grime. I wonder why that, that S is there. S for save me. It's crying out for help, Jackie. Let's hope you can come to its rescue. Next, Jackie needs to sort out the tricky broken bracket. With wood glue, I don't mind a bit of ooze because that means I've put enough glue on there and I can just wipe off the excess. Right, I'll just leave that to set for a moment, get my sanding papers ready, and then I'll sand. These scissors are quite blunt. These are my paper scissors. But cutting sandpaper helps to sharpen it. Nice tip, Jackie. Always keeping us sharp. But have you had any ideas on the table revamp? It's going to be paint on the legs and on the skirt of the table, and we're going to have wallpaper on the top and on that second shelf there. Jackie's using a low-grade sandpaper to remove the surface stain. She wants a nicely keyed surface to then ensure a smooth paint finish. Do you enjoy this part of the process? Do I like sanding? It's necessary. Let's put it that way. But we'll take that as a no. I've just spotted something. Something good? I don't know why I didn't see it before. Ah, uh, something <laughs> bad. <laughs> That's missing. Oh, dear. I'm going to have to create another one here. Jackie is drawing around one of the existing corner blocks onto a piece of MDF. She's then cutting it out with a hacksaw before smoothing off the edges with sandpaper. It's not perfect. Once it's on, hopefully you won't notice that it's different. It's like one of those um, cakes. Victoria sponge? No, it's flat. A flat cream cake? Remind me not to come to yours for afternoon tea. So, I'm really happy with that stain, so what I'm going to do is get this table outside and get spraying. It's quite windy today, not ideal, um, but I'll give it a go. Jackie's throwing caution to the wind and she gets spraying. She wants this table to stand out with a bold colour and is going for a midnight blue. I think by the time I do the second coat, it will be even deeper, which will be really nice. Yeah. Leaving the paint to dry, Jackie is picking out prints for the table surfaces. So which one do I go for? Gosh, this is a real difficult decision. Decisions. Decisions. So far, Jackie's spent £10 on the table transformation. But will indecision cost her, or will she rise to the occasion? In Sissy, Bruce is about to get started on the mammoth task of turning the skis into two outdoor benches. So I've done a little bit of research on this guy right here, Nick. He died in an avalanche climbing K2 in the late 70s. And his friends, as an honor to him, they actually opened up uh, a ski shop in Altrincham. And I believe 
That might be where Jackie got these. I think Nick might be happy with what we're going to do with these. Now he knows more about their history, Bruce is feeling the pressure to give these skis a lift. What's first? So what I want to do is take the hardware off of them, and I'm going to flip them up this way and use them this way. Bruce is starting by removing the front and back bindings, which are the bits you clip your boots into. There we go. Much lighter now. <laughs> That's one down, only 15 to go. These are really in there. Oh dear, have you snow plowed into some trouble already, Bruce? Come on, Bruce, give it some welly. All right, we're kind of done asking it to come loose. One of the screws is stuck fast. I'm telling it's going to come loose now. So Bruce is hoping that the heat from the blowtorch will expand the metal and cause it to loosen. And there it goes. Extreme, but effective. With the bindings removed, Bruce is sketching out how he wants his benches to look. I really want the, sh the skis to be on the uh, on show here. And then just another set of legs here. OK. And yeah, you get the idea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start cutting some timber down and get working. Bruce is using his mitre saw to cut the components for the bench frame from one piece of Iroko. What I'm doing first is cutting out the legs. before putting them through the planer to smooth off the edges. OK, so those are my legs. Um, stand them up, they're a bit boring, right? So kind of basic. Just want to put a little bit of a shape in them. Bruce wants to create a tapered leg and is marking out a gradient before cutting and finishing them on the belt sander. Finally, he's using biscuit joints to assemble the frame. There we go. With the bases roughly assembled, Bruce is cutting the skis to size, so they're the perfect length for a two-seater bench. So I'm really happy with how that's coming out. Um, it's taken off all the old wax. I think they're going to look great. I think Jack will love them. So what I'm doing now is just mocking the skis up on top of the legs. They are strong. And um, once the legs are put together, you know, it won't be any problem for people to sit on. So I'm going to have a try, see how, it, uh, see how it sits. It's always the important thing, right? Gently. There we go. Phew, that could have been a wipeout. Yeah, that works. Right, enough chilling. You promised Jackie two benches. Don't even think about going off piste now. In Fletney, Chloe's about to get to work. She's going to have to box clever to give this old thing a creative update. So, Chloe, what's the plan? This is in quite good condition, but it's a bit tired. I need to do a little bit of repair work before I start painting it. But, yeah, I think it should be a nice job. Chloe's first job is to remove the motif. I'm going to get rid of this little bit of detail in the middle. I quite like the idea of the pattern of it, but it's dating the piece of it, so I want to modernise it and get rid, but use the design somewhere else. Chloe is using a chisel, a hammer and a gentle touch to try and prise it off without damaging the wood. I don't want to ruin the box. No, that wouldn't be a great start. Oh, it doesn't want to come off. Oh, not too bad. There's a little bit of damage. It could have been worse, but it didn't make it easy for me, though. <laughs> With the motif removed, Chloe's mixing up wood filler that she'll use to smooth any imperfections. It's quick drying, so she has to work fast. I'm overfilling as opposed to underfilling, because you can always sand it back. And I've got a few little nibbles at the corners here on the edges. That's covered over nicely. I think that's going to sand well. With the filler dry, Chloe is using an orbital sander to smooth the surfaces. So I've sanded the um, blanket box, and it's looking good, except for the top. <laughs> I'm worried that if I keep sanding, I'll damage the veneer on top. So I think I'm going to have to either strip or scrape this old varnish off um, to get a good finish, really. 
Chloe is removing the lid and applying a non-toxic stripper that she hopes will remove the stubborn surface varnish. Leaving the stripper to do its thing, Chloe can move on to her favourite part, adding some colour. You might want to add oiling those wheels to your to-do list. The fun bit. Chloe and Jackie agreed a plan to give this blanket box a retro floral colour overhaul. I only want a flat finish on this part. Um, and then I'm going to add some detail later on. Can I just paint it blue? Do you think Jackie will be pleased with me? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't like to say. Might need one more coat. We'll see when it dries. So I've got the main colour for the blanket box, but I want to think about some accent colours to brighten up a little bit and go for this kind of retro look that I want. So I'm going to have a play around now and just see what works together. Chloe's looking for colours in a similar palette to the blue base coat and an opposing colour to make it stand out. I've got a rough idea of where I'm going, so I hope you can see the vision. Uh, not quite. But before she can bring her vision to life, Chloe needs to check on the lid. Mm, that is a beast, that um, stuff that's on that. Don't know what they used. It does need a little longer, so I'm going to get back to the fun part. The varnish isn't playing ball yet, so Chloe's putting off dealing with it for now. But the lid is a crucial part of the new design. Hopefully, it doesn't have her boxed in. In London, Jackie is putting the finishing touches to the occasional table. I love my choice of wallpaper. I definitely made the right decision. It matches perfectly with the paint colour. At 80 years old, the little table was on its last legs and headed for the skip. But now... It's been given a whole new lease of life, thanks to Jackie's bright and bold overhaul. She gently restored the oak table by repairing the broken stretcher and recreating the missing corner bracket. The frame is now a cool matte blue, and Jackie has added a jungle theme print that adorns the surfaces. The top has been finished off with a generous coat of varnish to ensure it's durable making this little table fit for more than just occasional use. Jackie set out to create a trendy place to pop your tea and biscuits, but will anyone want to buy it? I love the quirkiness of it. I love the colours. It's fun, it's fabulous, and it's functional. This is the showstopper. When Jackie saw Paul at the recycling centre, she was charmed by his little table. It looks rather nice. Is it yours? It's uh, from a wife's family. Why are you getting rid of it now? We've got too many bits and pieces like this. Oh, have you? <laughs> too many of them. Jackie took on the table and Paul had some ideas of his own. I think Jackie can uh, have it repaired and perhaps have it painted, shabby chic, and uh, pass it on. Well, Paul, you weren't far off. Jackie shared photos online and the table was snapped up by a furniture shop in Yeovil. Owner Dawn thinks her customers will love it. How could you not be happy with that colourful scene? The vibrancy, the colours, the whimsical animals and the tropical foliage, they're so on trend. It's a beautiful piece for someone's home. Jackie is in sale to visit Paul to show him the occasional table's new look and hand over some profit. Hi, Paul. How oh, are hello, you? Jackie. How are you? I'm very well. Nice you to well? see you again. So is this where the table lived? Yes. Well, not originally, no. Yes. Uh, the table's with, shall we say, Granny. Yeah. And we had a lot of small pieces, and uh, we were just decluttering at the time when That's it went right. down to the uh, refuse centre and... Uh, yeah took that little table. Did you ever wonder, what's Jackie going to do with that table? Basically, I just thought it would be um, restored to its original glory, shall we say. Well, actually, Paul, it was something I took on myself. Yes. Um, would you like to see...? Oh, please, certainly. <laughs> oh, wow, that's lovely. 
Oh, I love the pattern. I felt it was still useful as a table, oh, yeah. so yes. I kept it as a table. Yeah. So you approve? Oh, I approve, certainly, yes. And I'm sure uh, Great Granny would approve and uh, my wife will approve, certainly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you're pleased. Well, someone else loved it too. It was sold to a shop in Somerset, and I have for you, Paul, £185. No. No. Yes. On a little occasional table <laughs> like that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Amazing, thank you. So what might you do with £185? Well, pounds? Gr Granny's favourite charity was Salvation Army. So uh, I'm sure it will go straight to there. Oh, that's so good. You know, I'm really pleased that you loved what I've done. No, thank you. And then obviously the charity's going to benefit Is as it? well. Yes. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you so, so much. Lovely. Really nice to catch up with you. Yeah, OK. Right, thanks, bye -bye. Paul. Bye-bye. Bye. Jackie spent just £10 to transform the table. It was sold for £195, leaving Paul with a profit of £185 that he's going to donate to Granny's favourite charity. Straight from her success with the occasional table, Jack is in Sissy to find out how Bruce has got on with the skis. The skis weren't too bad to work with. It was kind of going back and forth which way I was going to put them and this and that, but in the end, I got there and uh, they made lovely slats. Now, I'm usually confident about the things that I bring to Bruce, but I'm a little bit nervous about this one. I really love the retro vibe of the skis, and I'm hoping he's managed to retain that. When Jackie found the skis, they'd been once loved, but were about to be wiped out. But now... They're crushing it as a pair of contemporary benches. Bruce has smoothed and waxed each ski to make them the focal point of this outdoor seating. All of the bindings have been removed, but Bruce has retained the character by leaving the top of the skis on show. Bruce used Iroko wood for the base, which he's treated to make the benches fit for outdoor use. It's quite a transformation, but will Jackie have chills when she sees them? Wow, Bruce. These are incredible. Thank you. I thought that you might chop them up. I thought about that at first, but then I was like, I really want to keep them as whole as I could. Can I, can I just try it? Absolutely, go ahead. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty comfortable, It's not actually. too bad, considering no, they were fabulous. never intended to be part of a bench. You can easily fit four people on it. I love it, and I love it with the curve. Yeah, I love that little upturn at the end. Yeah, and they even tuck together. So you can even push them together and get them side by side, just like that. Obviously. They're nice. But they're, I mean, they're, they're plenty strong. They'll hold the weight. So what about budget? We're bang on budget. 500 for the pair. Bruce, you've done it again, haven't you? Thank you so Thank much, you. Bruce. Cheers. I love it. I'll and see you I soon. I pick them up soon. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Bruce. That went really well. Jack was happy. The skis really came through. And I was a bit apprehensive with using them at first, but I'm uh, really happy I left them the way I did. Well, I was not expecting that. I absolutely love those benches. Well done, Bruce. When Jackie met Sue, she was saying goodbye to her skis. Oh, that looks very sporty. <laughs> well, it is, but we're a bit old for it now. <laughs> They've been well used by Sue's family. Like my husband's, my, my children's, they're quite old. I can't wait to get rid of them. Would you mind if I took them? OK. Jackie took them off her hands and Sue couldn't imagine what could be done with them. No idea. I'd be very interested to hear. Well, they're certainly interesting, Sue. Jackie shared photos of the ski benches online and they were snapped up by a ski wear shop and cafe in Loughborough. Owner Julie thinks they're a perfect fit. I'm really happy with the ski benches. Uh, now they're here in the shop, they look amazing and they should fit in really, really well with the style um, of the shop and the coffee shop that we've got going on here. Jackie's in sale to catch up with Sue, to show her the transformation and hand over the profit. 
Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very oh, well. Lovely to see you. Well, Sue, the last time we met was at the recycling centre, Indeed. wasn't it? Indeed. Altrincham, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you were throwing away a collection of skis. That's right, yes. Because they, they belong to you and your family. Yeah, it's a family, yes. We, yeah. know, we used to go on family holidays. And yeah. Yeah. Well, it was something that I gave to an amazing maker called mm. Bruce, um, who's based in Yorkshire. Would you like to see what Bruce has done with the I'd skis? I'd love to. I'd love to, yes. He has made them oh. into benches. That's absolutely super, that. I've, I'm not surprised. And I like the way they curve up at the end. Yeah, this is why he didn't want to cut them. And then you've got this really beautiful sort of African timber. Do you approve? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think they're wonderful. Well, um, someone else that absolutely loved them as well. So I have for you a little bit of profit um, of £50 Ooh. for your skis. Wow. <laughs> that's very nice. I must say, well, that's good. That's, that's not, you know, that's amazing. Mm. And so, Sue, if you don't mind me asking, what might you do with um, that money? We have um, a Macmillan charity coffee morning coming up next week at the club, so I'll don donate some to that, and I might even treat the, the family to a little something. Oh, that's so nice. Well, Sue, enjoy, and uh, thank you very much for letting me have your skis. You take care. I and you as well. OK, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I loved Sue's reaction. She absolutely adored what Bruce did with her old skis. And plus, there's money going to a good cause as well. Bruce's costs to create the benches came to £500. They were sold for £550, leaving Sue with a profit of £50 that she's going to split between a donation to a cancer charity and a treat for her family. With the ski benches jumping off the shelf, Jack is in Fletney to find out how Chloe's fared with the blanket box. I'm really looking forward to showing Jackie this. I think she's going to like it. I think it looks really different. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, I think it's got the wow factor now. Well, that blanket box I left with Chloe was sturdy, but in need of some serious TLC. Chloe had some arty revival ideas in mind. I wonder if she's managed to pull it off. When Jackie found the blanket box, it had had 50 years of use and was showing its age. But now... It's in full bloom thanks to Chloe's botanical hand-painted designs. She's opted for a pale colour palette of blues and pinks and delicate flowers and foliage now cover every surface of the box. Chloe eventually managed to sort out the bumpy lid and, as promised, she's added some extra detail inside in the form of wild stems. Chloe hoped her artistic flair would give this little box big impact. But will Jackie love it? <sighs> Chloe. <laughs> what do you think? I love the colours. Obviously, this is all hand... Yeah, all hand-painted. You know what I love? It's soft, yeah. but then you've got quite a, a nice bit of drama with all of your gorgeously hand-painted yeah. um, florals and, and the foliage. I was inspired by... Cos do you remember it had that little floral motif oh, yeah. in the middle? And I just wanted to get a lot more floral in there. Oh, I've got a surprise for you, Jackie. Oh, then. yeah. So, look. I remember you said <laughs> the actual wood was really nice and I just think it's a bit of a surprise when you open the lid and keeps a bit of the original character. So, <gasps> yeah. Think of all the shoes you can fit in there. I might need three of those. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a budget of £295. Yes. How did we do there? So, on budget. Yeah, all fine. Thank you very much. Oh, honestly, it was a pleasure, actually. Blanket box is one of my favourites. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, my love, uh, I shall get that picked up and I will see you really soon. Bye. Take care, bye. Bye-bye. I think Jackie liked it. I'm really pleased with it. It was really dreary before and now it's just happy, it's fun and I hope it finds a new home. Wow, what an amazing transformation. That blanket box has gone from yellow, old and sad to completely arty and fabulous. I love it. At the recycling centre, Mike and Jake's blanket box caught Jackie's eye. 
can I stop you in the tracks there, guys? What I think is a blanket box. It is a blanket box. Uh, who does right. it belong to? And we inherited it when our children were uh, a little bit smaller, uh, but for the last few years we've not had any use for it, really. Can I take it off your hands? You certainly can. That's very kind. Mike and Jake were happy it could be hopefully saved. It seems a shame just for it to get crushed, basically. Hopefully someone can use it for another 50 years. Well, Chloe certainly tried to give it a new lease of life. Jackie shared photos of the new look storage box online. But did she manage to secure a sale? Jackie's in Bowdoin to see Mike and Jake, to show them the transformation and hopefully hand over a profit. Oh, hi there. How are you? Hi. All right? Yeah, I'm really well. Hey, nice to see you both. <laughs> you too as well. The last time we met, you were throwing away a blanket box. Did it live here? It did, yes. Yeah, we used to have it upstairs in uh, uh, in our room. We used to have a TV on it. It was purely just used as a stand. But then uh, I repainted the bedroom and it didn't fit in with the new painting and decoration. So we were going to just go and get it thrown away. It was something I didn't work on myself, but I took it to an amazing artistic designer called Chloe down in Market Harbour away. Would you like to see what she's done with it? We would, yes, yeah. definitely. Brace yourselves, guys, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That doesn't look like the same box. That's amazing. That, is that really amazing. is fantastic. That's lovely. I'm so glad that you like it. We do, yes. yes. You seem really impressed yes. with it. That's yeah. very brilliant. impressed. That's fantastic. Well, look, someone else was impressed and it was actually sold to a private buyer and I have got for you £300. Wow. £300? £300. That's amazing. That is amazing. I never thought it'd be anything like that, and especially when it was just about to be thrown away as well. So what might you do with that money? Well, uh, we're going to donate it to uh, Alzheimer's charity. So I think it'll go to a good cause. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's so great. I mean... Uh, you know, I'm thrilled about that, and I know Chloe will be thrilled. I'll let her know. Mm. Um, she'll be really happy. Guys, thank you so, so much. Thank you as well. Take okay, care. Thank, thank you, you very much, much Jackie. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. You too. Chloe's costs came to £295. The blanket box was sold for £595, leaving Mike and Jake with a profit of £300 that they're going to donate to an Alzheimer's charity. Jackie rescued three items from the crusher. The occasional table now has a bright new future. The old skis are revitalised as cool outdoor benches. And the blanket box has been saved by a floral overhaul. Well, what a tricky trio of items that was. But with a lot of hard work and creative thinking, Bruce and Chloe have proved one man's trash really can be another person's treasure. Great work, guys. Yeah.